Bonjour, everyone. Have you recently spent time at the beach? If so, lucky you. But for the rest of us, let's just say we've been on a sunny beach for about two or three weeks. Have you noticed that your hair color starts changing and becomes a little lighter and warmer? Do you know why this happens? Let's take a guess. How does hair naturally lighten? If you say because of the sun, the sea, the wind, the humidity, all of these are right. But let's explore why. The sun brings heat, infrared rays, and UV rays. Heat speeds up many chemical reactions. Water facilitates chemical reactions, even more so when the water contains salt or chlorine, as in the ocean or swimming pools. And finally, mechanical actions, like brushing hair or blow drying, increase the hair's sensitivity. So these three things speed up lightning, but they aren't actually doing the job. So what's really behind the lightning process? Take a breath, that's the answer, oxygen. It oxidizes the natural pigments inside our hair. It's important to understand this. We need to distinguish oxygen, which is the main factor in lightning, from the other elements that help start or accelerate the process. But natural lightning can only go so far. The oxygen in the air isn't concentrated enough to reach high lift levels. And natural lightning takes time, up to several weeks. Most clients want a noticeable lift and in one hour. Cue the colorists. That's where we come in. Clients go to the salon and trust the skilled hands of talented colorists like you and me. We use professional products and techniques for a pro lightning process that will look beautiful and last. So how do we enhance nature's lightening process in the salon? In the salon, what products replace the oxygen in the air we breathe and what products play the role of natural accelerators? Get your pens and paper ready. We're getting technical. First, an oxidant replaces the oxygen in the air. It's hydrogen peroxide, which is oxygen concentrate in a bottle, but in a creamy texture and it's available in different concentrations. Second, decoloration products act as natural accelerators, but with supernatural powers. As a result, the oxygen in the oxidant bottle delivers more lift and in a fraction of the time, just one hour. This is called provoked lightning. It's a decoloration process used for everything from global lightning and highlights to balayage. So to put it simply, in natural lightning, exposure to oxygen in the air and natural elements takes two to three weeks. In provoked lightning, exposure to high levels of oxygen and a boost of an alkaline agent takes one hour. Oxygen is the star, no matter which process is used. Now let's go deeper and see what's actually happening inside the hair. Remember who's the rock star natural hair color? That's right, it's neutral brown, and this brown is made of a certain quantity of blue, red, and yellow pigments. In the beginning of the lightning process, blue is the first pigment to be eliminated because it's very fragile. Out of the three primary colors, blue is the only cool color. So just a few minutes into application, hair is left with only the two warm colors, red and yellow. After blue is eliminated, red is the next color to be oxidized. Only yellow pigments remain in the hair. But yellow doesn't give up easily. It's difficult to oxidize and so is eliminated slowly. At the end of the lightening process, all pigments are removed and the hair turns almost white. When we watch the process, we actually see warm passage colors ranging from red to yellow. As time goes on, the lightning process slows down. It's quick in the first minutes with blue pigment, slows slightly with red, and finally slows even more with yellow. Now each undercoat has a corresponding level of depth. For example, red at a level four 
orange at a level six and yellow at a level eight. Darker than red, you will find dark and very dark red. Lighter than yellow, you will meet pale yellow, very pale. Between red and orange, red orange. Between orange and yellow, yellow orange. Throughout your career, these undercoats will be your guide. In order to master the lightening process, every professional must know all the undercoats by heart. You're doing a great job. Keep up the good work and stay focused. When you're a newcomer to the industry, it can be difficult to fully know what an undercoat looks like. When we look inside the hair, we see that the brown color of our hair comes from three pigments, blue, red, and yellow. What is happening when we lighten hair? Out of the three pigments, blue is the most sensitive to oxidation and disappears first. This cool color that goes away leaves the hair with the warm color consisting mainly of red and yellow. It is then that the red disappears slowly. Hair now is becoming orange with as much red as yellow. After 30 minutes, very little red is remaining, so the hair becomes yellow-orange. These three passage colors are what we call undercoats or undertones in some countries. These passage colors are symbolized by 10 colors, but in reality, they are continuous. So we simplify by identifying 10 levels. Let's use the example of a natural light brown. It's a level five. We start with a certain amount of blue, red, and yellow. Say we want to lift two levels. After we apply the pre-lightener, how do we know when we should rinse? If we want to lighten two levels, the goal is a level seven. So that's a yellow-orange undercoat. We rinse the hair when we actually see it has a yellow-orange color. That's how we know it's at a level seven. Memorizing undercoats is everything. Knowing how to read undercoats is like knowing how to read a map. You need to know where to go to get the result your clients desire. Oxygen and undercoats. You just met two key actors who play a starring role in your life as a colorist. Get to know them well, especially those undercoats. Your path to becoming a skilled colorist truly begins once you've made them your best friend.